it's it's shock, it's numbing, it's devastation. Uh, I spoke to a member of uh, the bus family through text and said, I just don't want to believe it. It's too sad to believe. And uh, the timing of this, it would never be appropriate timing. It would never be timing that any of us could digest and accept and move on from. But the fact that last night, Kobe Bryant was celebrated. His entire career was almost brought back up uh, for everyone to, to remember on, on, a, on a Saturday night in the middle of the season because the timing of LeBron James passing him on the all-time scoring list and to see the way Kobe had embraced LeBron in these season and a half since LeBron came to the Lakers and to see the class in his words when he spoke about LeBron nearing the mark to Bill Plash to the LA Times when he spoke to Bill Orem of The Athletic. And, you know, those were two guys that were really tough competitors in their day. And he got to a place rather quickly in post-basketball life where he was comfortable what he did back then, and he was more than comfortable in, in what he was beginning in his new endeavors uh, when it came to uh, Granity Studios and, and his Wizenard children's book series and um, of course the time he was spending with his family uh, him, him and his wife Vanessa had, had two new daughters and um, you know I was able to see him a couple times in the last six months or so and um, you know he was a guy if you cover him as a reporter you got some of that competitive nature as well you know we had ESPN rankings every season and Oftentimes, I was the face of those rankings because I was the ESPN representative on the ground with his teams day by day. And later in his career, he was slipping from the top 10, and he wasn't happy about it. Uh, and it led to some memorable back and forth uh, between him and I. And I mean, I'm going to relish those moments now. <sighs> you know, he cared so much. He really loved basketball, and it's, you know, obviously someone that my job is to be a journalist, but I don't think I'd be doing this job if it wasn't doing it with basketball. Uh, I identify with it so much as well as, as a person. And I, you know, I really appreciated that because there are a lot of guys, even some of the greats, some of the, the guys who, who win the championships and get all the money and the endorsement deals and score all the points and get all the all-star appearances. They don't have that love and dedication to basketball that Kobe Bryant did. And, um, you know, I, I, honestly, Michael, I, I can't believe I'm talking to you about this. Um, I, I was looking forward to having making my first ever Hall of Fame ceremony trip this upcoming fall to go see Kobe Bryant get in. You know, I've been covering the league for 15 years, and I, I never, you know, had the kind of personal connection with any of the inductees to want to make that trip to Springfield in, in my off season. And um, I, 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 I still plan to go. Uh, and and try to honor him posthumously. Yeah, Dave, that's one of the unfortunate uh, aspects of what you and I do for a living. Ultimately, you're going to have to do your job talking about someone passing away that you were close to in some regard or just had a lot of respect to on a personal level, and that's happening today uh, with the death of Kobe Bryant. And for those who didn't grow up in Los Angeles, didn't spend a lot of time there, sometimes it's hard to put into context what Kobe Bryant meant to those fans. You talk about his dedication to the game. Well, those fans are dedicated to Kobe in a level that maybe you see in New England with Tom Brady or Derek Jeter in New York. And this is the scene outside of Staples Center just moments ago. There's already a memorial started. Fans are swarming the area there in downtown Los Angeles to pay their respects to Kobe Bryant. Again, he came there as a teenager. He helped that franchise win five NBA championships. He won an MVP. He became the identity for so many Laker fans as it related to the rest of sports, maybe even to the rest of the country, because Kobe Bryant in their mind was the greatest, so that meant L.A. had the greatest as well, and that is the scene outside of Staples Center. How would you describe the relationship and maybe the respect, if you would, Dave, that the Laker fans had for Kobe Bryant and vice versa? Well, first of all, he took the idea of being a Laker and – fortified the belief that the fans have that they are so special, the Laker elitism, and cheered on that belief and said, it is special. This is the only team I ever want to play for. All 20 seasons that he played in the NBA, he was donning the purple and gold. And 
you know, when guys like Magic Johnson and Byron Scott and James Worthy and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came back around, Michael Cooper, Kurt Rambis, Kobe embraced that, and he wanted that lineage of being a Laker to mean something. And again, that gets back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, he didn't want to, even though him and LeBron were fierce competitors, he wanted that to end once LeBron came because he cared about the franchise. He cared about the bus family and he cared about quite frankly, the, the fans and he, you know, they gave him so much and he wanted them to be able to enjoy what it is to be a Laker fan with the next generation of teams. And, you know, I think a part of the way he played, you know, was he the best player of his generation bar none? I mean, Tim Duncan had a wondrous career with as many championships and more finals MVPs. But the way Kobe Bryant played, he enticed your imagination. And he made you think stuff that shouldn't be possible was possible, like scoring 81 in a game, like hitting a a banked-in three fading to his left against the Miami Heat over the outstretched arms of Dwayne Wade, Uh, like the nine game-winning shots he hit in the 2009-2010 season, which he capped with a championship in Game 7 over the Boston Celtics at home, uh, the, the same Celtics uh, team that he would watch VHS tapes of you know, Lakers-Celtics rivalries back in the 80s when he was living overseas while his dad played in Italy and his grandparents would send him over tapes so he could see what the pros looked like in America. Uh, I mean, his, his life was uh, a storybook that wouldn't be believed, and, and, you know, the end of his life is something. How wide-ranging that crash debris is there in Calabasas. Again, this is northwest of downtown Los Angeles. If you're familiar with the 101 freeway, it's out that way as you head towards Oxnard and Santa Barbara. Uh, Kobe Bryant, again, one of five people who died in the helicopter crash at the age of 41, along with his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, his wife, Vanessa, they have a few more girls as well, not on that helicopter today. A couple of more details. Mike mentioned Calabasas. 10 a.m. local time is when it happened and the crash engulfed a brush fire, and that made it difficult for emergency and paramedics to be able to get to the scene. The numbers don't define Kobe Bryant, even though these numbers are illustrious. The five-time NBA champion, he was an 18-time All-Star. He scored 81 points against the Toronto Raptors. Michael, in his final NBA game, he scored 60 points. What a way to leave the season after the 2015-2016 campaign. That was the end of two decades in purple and gold. And right there with Kareem and Magic and Worthy and anybody that has worn the purple and gold. I know you worked in Los Angeles for a long time. We saw the memorial outside of the Staples Center, a building in some way. Lost Kevin. Uh- Kevin Fraser will be joining us in a moment. The Grammys are going on tonight at Staples Center. You saw that scene from the fans earlier. Hey, just the emotion and the look on your face right now as we're watching you. Just whatever you want to say, I can see you're emotional. I'm just going to give you the floor to respond and give your thoughts on the death of Kobe Bryant. You know, um, we, uh, we get caught up in this world in um, debates and who is the greatest and love to judge people and off the court and on the court decisions. I think a lot of times we forget about who people are. And um, I know for me, I had a defining moment in my life that he, he pushed me in the right direction. And um, for somebody who's a new father, who has a baby girl, um, you know, I'm not gonna say prayers and condolences because I don't even, I don't even know how you capture this moment, man. Um, I know everybody's coming out with their Kobe Bryant story, and that's fine. But um, he is just, uh, he was one of the most special individuals I've ever met. And uh, it wasn't just his on the court performance, it was who he wanted to be, how he held himself. And we're all prone to make mistakes. We all live this life. Um, but his innate character, his, um, his being, his spirit uh, was incredible. It was just incredible, and uh, it's rare that I've been around a lot of people in my life, and you know, every time I was around him, if that was through the Players' Tribune, if that was through as a player, if that was through random workouts, there's something so damn uplifting about him. It just made you want to be better in every aspect of your life because that's who he was, and that's the standard of excellence that he held himself to all the time. And um, 
today's just a really today's a tough day. Today's a hard day, and I hope that um, everybody at home, you, you give that person next to you um, whatever thing you have wrong in your life with them. If this might be small or big, let that shit go. It doesn't matter. I know I curse. I'm sorry. It's okay. None of that stuff matters, man. This is uh, it's about life and uh, being precious with every damn second we have here. Because it, from somebody who knows who almost happened to me like that, man, it's just over. It's done randomly, randomly, arbitrarily. And, uh, you know, his, his four girls and his wife, we, uh, we need to come around them and support them and help them. And the NBA should cancel all games today. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Yeah, we should mention there are eight games in the NBA today. It appears as though at least the Rockets-Nuggets game is going off because they did hold a moment of silence, a moment of prayer in a sense, before they tipped off this afternoon to eulogize and to remember one of the greatest players that's ever picked up a basketball. I know he impacted your life personally, professionally, way beyond the game. And you can answer this from a basketball perspective or beyond. What separated Kobe Bryant from other people? <laughs> you know, so my rookie year, I only played one year in the league. And my rookie year, we were playing against the championship Lakers. And it's Kobe, Shaq, that squad. And I remember I was in a slump, wasn't playing well, I was getting sidetracked throughout the season, doing things I shouldn't be doing. And, uh, you know, pumped up about playing this, playing this guy here. And I, I got to the Staples Center early that day, like around 2 o'clock, 2.33 to shoot and get 400 made shots. And, um, you know, I walk in with the ball boy and I'm putting on my sneakers. And who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant working out so hard, like game-like moves. And watching him, like, all right, thank you. No, that's my motivation for the day. That's great. I get a chance to work out when Kobe Bryant's working out. And I go and I do my workout, and I work out for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And I go back on the sideline, and I unlace my shoes, and I keep hearing the ball bounce. I look down, and this guy's still going. He's still going. And it's still the same type of moves that I saw him going from the moment I walked in the gym. And I sat there and watched him for 10 minutes, and then I left. I was like, there's no way this guy's going to be able to have enough energy to play against us tonight. And that night, he just, he just destroyed us. He destroyed us in every facet of the game. And I remember after the whole game was over, I was like, don't be that cheesy dude. Don't ask another man, like another guy, like where that drive comes from. But I couldn't help myself. I, I sought him out and I, I found him. I said, you know, like, wh why? Why do you stay and keep working out? And I, this line changed my life as a person. He said, because I saw you come in a gym and I want you to know that no matter how hard you worked, you weren't going to outwork me. And it was one of those things where I was sitting there saying, like, who am I? <laughs> who am I? But that's just how he was. That's the cloth he was cut from. That's who he was every day in every facet of his life. Uh, you know, if it was him trying to be better, coming up with cartoons, animated series, and <laughs> winning a damn Oscar. Uh, if it was him trying to be better as a person. You know, look, I don't know every aspect about Kobe, but I know how he touched me in my life. And that moment right there was, I know my career ended short, but I, I carry that in everything I do. Like, that's, that's how I attack my life. And if it's with my wife being a better husband, if it's with my daughter being a better dad, if it's with work, how do I work more? How do I work better? How do I work more efficiently? Um, that's a huge part of who I am because of that moment. And um, I can never thank him enough for that. Your words have been incredibly poignant. The San Antonio Spurs are going to